Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of, magnet of Magnetic Surface. I am here, dear ones, because of your magnificence. There is no other reason to have messages from the other side of the veil to a human being. Unless there were things that we wanted you to know that perhaps that you do not understand yet, or perhaps you haven't realized, you haven't cognized. If you think about why is there channeling at all? I would say the reason for channeling is to have information and energy from a magnificent creator to the souls of those who are family. On this planet right now, there is so much that is hidden from you. And the first thing that is hidden is that you are part of this creation family, born magnificent not born dirty, and we'll say this until my partner's last breath. Understand that perhaps what you have been told may not be the entire truth. I would like to start a series of four channelings. And they're going to be on a subject which we have touched on, that my partner has taught in conference, but that we would like to make as complete as we can within four sessions. And it has to do with one of those hidden things. It is something, perhaps, that is known by those who would normally watch a program such as this. This kind of a program would feature esoteric truths core truths, perhaps, to them. To others, not truths at all, but odd things. But these odd things are beginning to open up and become a lot more obvious as truth to so many who never expected that kind of a thing in their life. Almost all of the guest speakers on these shows that you are watching now, almost all of them, will tell you about a turning point in their life where they went from what they were taught to what they discovered. And they will tell you that what they were taught and that bag that they were in called life is small and and, and looks small today to them compared to a grander truth that opened them up into something far, far, far better. And the nice part of this is that they did not have to throw away what they had learned. It just gets bigger and better and enhanced. Perhaps you learned already about a loving God, a creator, who actually may know you. The rest of the story enhances that to something you didn't expect. If you are part of that source, there is the ability to use tools you didn't know about. The reason for this program that exists, we're going to talk about one of them now. The entire reason this program exists is for you to understand there is so much more that belongs to you, that you can do yourself, that will give you peace over these times, these troubling times, give you healing in the middle of a troubling time, that will take away fear, that will put you in a place where you will even live longer. Dear ones, that is a truth, and that's not a truth you were told when you were born. That is a truth you learn, and you learn it with an awakening, perhaps, at the time of your choice. I want to talk about the innate. Four amazing innate attributes. Four amazing innate attributes. And the first thing we're going to discuss is, what is it? What is it, really? What? 
Even that is confusing to so many. We're going to do another program on where is it? That's the most confusing of all. So many questions about the innate. Where is it? What is it? The third attribute and the third week, we'll talk about how to use it. What's the best way to capture the power of your own innate? And then the fourth one, hidden attributes about the innate. What else is there, perhaps, that we have not talked about? So in this first section, we're going to identify it to the best we can. But in that identification, there will be repeat. And that is, for those who have heard the channelings before, the teachings of my partner, the answers to the questions for over a year here, you're going to hear things we've covered. Some have asked, well, haven't you covered this before, Crying? And the answer is yes, but there are so many watching this right now who've never heard this. And the second part of this is you can't hear it too often. And I say that because it's not just information. This is an energetic transmission of truth about your own body and what's in it. You can't hear that too often. The reason I say that is because even right now, for the one who said, I've heard this before, I will say, well, then why don't you use it? <laughs> because I can tell you really have no idea what you have. It gave an expression a long time ago, a metaphor about so many things spiritual, but the innate is like this. You've been given a 747 airplane. And all you've done all your life is to run it up and down the runway. And you're proud of yourself. Wow, look at me in this big airplane, and look how fast it can go on this runway with really no idea that you can fly. The innate is that way. What is it? It's been called the smart body. Right away, we will tell you this. The innate is not in 3D. It's not chemistry. And you'll say, well, what is it if it is not chemistry? Is it consciousness? Partly. We're going to get to that when you ask, where is it? Consider there is an overlapping consciousness of your cellular structure that is nothing to do with your brain. It's the best I can do to give you an idea of what is there right now, as you sit there, as you watch this, called innate. And that overlapping consciousness of your cellular structure means it's a, a field, perhaps, within your body. Not a field that is outside of your body, but within your body. But it encompasses every single process the body has. Every single process. Now, I'm not talking just about cellular process, because your consciousness is also an attribute of your body. So innate is hooked in to your consciousness. Question, is your innate hooked in to your spirituality? Now that's a question for the next week. We'll get there. But let's define what it does that is so fascinating, that has interested scientists and, and those who who study spirituality, and even those who study technical things, because the innate encompasses so many things. Let's look at what it does. It's called a smart body because it knows about itself more than you do. It knows also about subconscious things. Now, this is one of the giveaways. The innate can go around your subconscious programming as well. 
because it knows what is and is not happening in your body. You may think you know what is and what is not happening in your body, but it is developed by your consciousness, which includes blocks to what may or may not be happening. Your innate has no blocks. Innate. Let's, get, let's go right to the miracle. Your innate is responsible for spontaneous remission. Period. There may be things in you right now that you are distressed about, or you might say so, so intensely fighting to change, or there's disease and all. And it's all within your own consciousness, within your own, your own, I would say, logic to discover what am I going to do next and how can I do this and how can I do that and who will I see and what will I write and all of that in order to solve them. I want you to picture for a moment what if it could all be solved in an instant. And Nate is known for that. It's known for that. So what does that tell you? It tells you you may be fighting a battle that you don't have to fight. There are so many things innate is responsible for. Dealing with your own conscious, not your subconscious. Innate knows what's wrong with you. That's why muscle testing works. It works with the innate. How is it that you can test your body and find out things like, for instance, are you allergic to this or that or whatever? And you'll have no idea. And before you ever turn to medicine to find out, the innate will tell you because it knows. Let me give you my favorite one. It's the consternation of medicine. Early on, the drug companies, in order to do scientific tests of their own work and their own drugs, had to use a scientific method, had to do blind studies, and so they developed the sugar-coated pill. So they do a test to find out how their drug works, and some of those pills, clearly marked to them but not to the others, they give to people, and they, there's nothing in them. And what they discovered early on was called the placebo effect. In other words, the people had the reaction that they were told they would have, even though there was nothing in the pill. And the consternation to researchers is the placebo effect because it skewed the data. They didn't like it because it really didn't tell them much about what they were doing because it kept getting in the way. <laughs> and this is where I say, humans, what is wrong with you that you didn't take a look and go, oh my, there's something grand happening. Let's study the placebo effect. But they didn't. They simply reported it. Oh, by the way, we have to throw away about 100 people here who got well anyway. Oh, that's the innate. In other words, your consciousness took a pill, and in that pill was the thought, it's going to do this or do that or cure this or cure that. And you took the pill, and it did. Mm -hmm. That's innate. What is it? Where your consciousness can be sharpened so much that you simply think about something and your innate then goes all the way. Spontaneous remission, placebo effect, homeopathy, it's all there. That's what it is. Would you like to know more? Where is it? How are you going to use it? Would you like to know? All of these channels are available for free and will be. You do not have to Buy these programs, dear ones, for these channels. This is a promise that my partner has made. And so you'll be able to hear all four and to learn more. Are you interested? You should be. This is a miracle about to happen in your own body. I'm crying in love with humanity and the majesty within it. And so it is. And from that beautiful space, that beautiful floaty space that many of you are still within, I invite you to gently 
Bring your awareness back into your body. You may open those eyes if you've had your eyes closed. And as we become more present in our body and more grounded, I want to announce who our special guest is, although many of you already know that joining us for this section of the program is Matt Kahn. And Matt, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Wonderful. Well, we want to tell everyone about you, although I find it surprising that there's people out there who don't know about you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and may I say, it's such a uh, huge energetic footprint yes. that he offers this planet and such a short bio yeah. tells me a lot about him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Matt Kahn is the author of the best-selling books, Whatever Arises, Love That. Everything is here to help you and the universe always has a plan. God bless you for saying that. He is a spiritual healer, highly attuned empathic healer and teacher, and um, he, he uh, serves the awakening and evolution of, of sentient beings everywhere throughout this uh, heart-centered uh, planet, and especially in his offerings that he has, and that is what he does. Now, his global audience is finding the support that they seek to feel more loved, to feel more awakened and empowered, to the greatest possibilities in life during this critical time in history. Now, Matt's spontaneous awakening arose from an out-of-body experience in early childhood, and it's through his direct experiences with the Ascended Mast Masters and the Archangels throughout his life that has helped him deliver what he's doing today. Using his intuitive abilities of seeing, hearing, feeling, and my favorite, direct knowing, Matt brings forth revolutionary teachings through both the written and spoken word. This assists energetically sensitive beings in healing the body, awaking the soul, and transforming reality through the power of love. And that is what Matt is all about. Welcome to this program, Matt. Thanks for having me. It's truly an honor to be here with you both. Aww. Aww. I feel the power of love already. I, would, it, you, I want you to... <laughs> We always like to know, how did this happen? And then you can go from there. Oh, my God, how did this happen? Well, when I was about eight years old or so, I had an out-of-body experience. And for me at that time, it felt like I went to sleep on any ordinary night. And I went to sleep and I had a dream. And I found myself in a garden filled with the most exquisite colors of, of light bursting in every flower and petal. And I was raised in the 80s, and during the 1980s, there was a very big campaign about don't talk to strangers. And as a kid, if I was somewhere without my parents, I felt very uh, scared. My first sense in this garden was, I don't know where I am, but I feel totally safe. Mm -hmm. And I even felt more love than I've even felt from my family. And I was held in a love I couldn't explain. And as I walked through this garden, I found myself moving through this field of waist-high flowers. And I can feel my eight-year-old body moving through this thick brush of waist-high flowers. And then I simultaneously realized I was floating above the flowers while also seeing myself moving through them. And I couldn't explain this, but the love was so intense, it didn't need explaining. And then about 10 feet in front of me, I saw this figure in a white robe, shoulder-length dark hair and a dark beard motioning me towards him. And I had no idea who he was. I was raised Jewish in my upbringing, but I felt a familiarity. And as I floated about, you know, close enough to him, I, I could see this pure light pouring out of his eyes. But as an eight-year-old, I kind of thought of like scary movies where people kind of roll their eyes up and in and, and their head. I had that funny thought and it broke the state of the experience. And I immediately fell through the garden. I fell through the sky and I fell back in my body. And only when I landed back in my body did I realize I left it. And then in the corner of my eye and the doorway of my bedroom, I saw the same figure motioning me towards him in this white energy or etheric energy, as I would now call it. And the very next day, I went to a friend's house and I said, I had the most extraordinary experience. And in their living room, they had a painting. And I said, that's who I met. Who is that? And he said, Matt, that's Jesus. And I go, well, I don't know who he is, but that's who I met. And then my friend had this reaction like, Matt, you, you could not have met Jesus. And I didn't know why it seemed so illegal at the time, but 
in my heart, I knew that's who I had met. Mm. And from that experience, I began to, in my peripheral vision, have, have the sense of angels walking with me. And I didn't even know what an angel was, but I knew that's what they were. And I started having these direct knowings where I just knew, but I didn't know why I knew, but it had that energy of the garden. So it's just something that I learned to trust. And then when I was about 18 or 19, my early 20s, let's say, I began get, receiving direct messages from Ascended Masters and Archangels. And I, I, I put these guides through every test because I was having an experience I've always wanted to have with the universe, but I also wanted to make sure I wasn't just completely insane. And as I began having this direct communication with the Ascended Masters and Archangels, they began inspiring me to go and deliver messages to people, like in the grocery store. And if I didn't, I felt like my heart was going to explode. And so that was a little interesting, just going up to people in the produce aisle and, hey, you don't know me, but your grandmother wants me to say this to you. And people would have these very overwhelming experiences. And I didn't really know how I was doing what I was doing. I just knew how to do it. And it led to all these other synchronicities. And I was led to a bookstore to take a psychic development class. And in the third week, they asked me to teach it. And I, <laughs> I laughed. I'm here to learn. I don't know what you're talking about. And then... They said, can you do a reading? What's a reading? And I would just sit down and it would happen. And within a short amount of time, I began guiding the lives of many people who would come to me and videos got put up on YouTube. And, you know, years later, after just serving humanity, I think my YouTube page has about 20 million views or something. And it's, for, for me, this is the fulfillment of my entire life's dream where when most kids my age were dreaming of being the next Michael Jordan mm -hmm. or being a police officer, I was dreaming of serving spirit. And you're oh doing it. Oh, my gosh. That, that's, that's the, he, he's living his dream, story. actually. When you're <laughs> talking we are so about glad. Oh, meeting yeah. people oh, yeah. and just... Uh, using the guidance to say those things. I have a confession. Like when I was first awakening, I would yeah. fantasize about oh, what what it would be like to have that gift. And yeah. now, like I'm hearing you actually did that. And yeah. I think the reason why I fantasized about that is when you know the other side is so real, Yeah, the way that you can share details with someone else that no one else would know, mm -hmm. but the right. other mm -hmm. side is a way of getting attention from right. spirit. Did you have any funny experiences when that started happening? Yeah. Oh my God. I remember going to a grocery store and saying to someone like next to the oranges, like, hi, you don't know me. <laughs> Before you run away, let me just say this. I'm being asked to say this by spirit. And if I don't, my heart's going to explode. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. I would have, I'd from love spirit. to have been the fly on the wall there. Me too. I know. Yeah. So what and happened next? And, and they just burst into tears. Oh, oh my God. I, I was processing the loss of this oh. relative. How did you know I needed to know that? And I oh. said, well, I was just told to, to pass that on. I'm just the messenger. That's and, beautiful. You know, the, there are so many experiences I've had in my life of, of things like this, of, you know, sitting in front of someone at an event and this energy of light comes through me and yeah. pulsates into the presence of someone who was at stage four cancer. And they happened to go to the doctor the next day. And it went from, it went from like, 80% cancer to like 20% cancer. Wow. And um, what's interesting is that when I was a kid, I, I looked up at the sky one day and I said, I want to know the glory of divine will. And I want to have a front row seat and see the miracles of the divine throughout my life. And, and humbly, I get to do that. I get to sit front row. I get to be the space in which this comes through, which I know, Lee, you know, you know all about that. And I get to then walk away just as flipped out as what came through me because I'm such a fan of this field and I'm such a student of this work. And for me, the, the, the work that I do with my audience, our audience, because it's really our, our world together, mm. is I love this work. I love discovery. I love magic. And I love being able to be a space to show people that magic is real. Yes. The other side is reality me talking to my parents who are both on the other side and talking to them about the book that, you know, I wrote, it's coming out next year. That's not a fantasy. That's my everyday life. And, and when I was a kid, I would be mesmerized by magicians. And in my heart, I didn't want to know how the trick worked because I knew magic was real. And so for me, this is a way for me to help 
not only just heal others and awaken their heart to love and unity, but to really help remind people that magic is real because it's what we are. How beautiful. What was one of the tests that you would put your guides through? (laughs) I would ask the same questions over and over again to see what the answer was. Um, I was trained very early by my guides as I was putting through the test and they said, look, it's not about who we say we are. It's about the quality of the content of what we say. And you will, you will never hear us say anything that is out of alignment with what we're here to share with you. So I'd ask the same questions over and over again. And it didn't matter if I, and I would also do this thing where every guide had to have a specific color uh, picture that every time I talked to him, it had to be the same. And if they wanted to introduce me to a new guide, it had to come through someone I already knew. And it was this very specific thing I did because I just wanted to make sure because if I'm gonna if I'm gonna do this work and I'm gonna work with people's most sensitive areas, mm. I wanna know that what I'm doing is compelling and is reliable because I take very seriously people's trust and and people's traumas that are that, that we're all healing. Mm. So I would ask the same questions over and over again. They would say things and I would go, why is that? And just 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 to see. Would the personality change? Would they get frustrated? Would the content ever change? And in the 15, 20 years I've been working with the Ascended Masters and Archangels all day, nothing's ever changed. And what was amazing for me was the greatest thing I've learned from working with these beings is how they treated me with respect and love in their presence. And my mission was always, yeah, I transmit the consciousness, I transmit the teachings, but to treat every person the way the masters treat me because that's what they're really teaching me. Beautiful. At what point, um, Matt, did you believe that what you had was accurate enough so that you could do what you do? In other words, you know, do you not doubt it anymore and say, okay, I've got it, or let's say I don't have it, but I believe it's true and real and I can be used. Funny answer is 10 years into my career. (laughs) But the thing was, is that, you know, it was after 10 years of doing this work that I finally was able to not have those lingering doubts. But what got me into the work before I could resolve my doubts, because you have to resolve some of your doubts as you go through into the field to do the work, was that I would just see and feel that people were just suffering so incredibly and people were suffering far worse than I've ever suffered. Mm -hmm. And so there was this original game that I played with myself that I said, I'm going to get so clear that I can feel confident coming out with my message. Mm -hmm. And then what interrupted that was the recognition that people are just suffering too deeply, that it can't be about this perfect way of doing it. I got to get out there and my intention is to help. My intention is to serve. And I would ask spirit every day, let me be exactly what people need for the healing that they deserve and desire. And as I was in the field doing the work, I was being trained. And as a channel, I could, I, I teach things I've never heard before. I can say things I've never said before. And then I'm outside of myself actually studying what I'm doing and saying. And over 15 years of doing you know, one-on-one sessions with people, I would listen to the dialogues. I don't really read books. I I, I, so I would listen to what people would say about other paths. I would hear what I would say in response. And I, that's how I educated myself was actually listening to what came through me. And so it was a very interesting process. But what, what really got me over myself, to be honest, was how deeply people hurt and how deeply I desire to be that space of healing for the people who hurt, including myself. I want to ask something that's uh, germane to this program. Uh, we have a Q&A section. I'll make this close, uh, fast. And uh, before you uh, came on, one of the questions uh, was from Greece is, uh, how do I get out of the uh, tension, worry, fear, and all that's happening in my country? And uh, it almost makes me nauseous to think about it. And I feel fine as long as I'm meditating, but then it all returns. What would you say? I would say that one of the fundamental shifts that is imperative to really realize is that what our experience Experiences, and this might be a little bit uh, different from an old paradigm belief, right? An old paradigm belief might say, the way I'm feeling is based on my perception of reality. And there are times where that's absolutely true. But I would say that in this new paradigm, what we're finding is that it's not, or, or what I would call 
I am in pain, I am in fear, I am in terror, is actually the fear and terror that I am personally healing for the collective. Mm -hmm. So I am what I identify with and call my own stuff. And then we apply spirituality and say, how can I get myself out of my stuff? And so I can then be in greater access with my better stuff, which is kind of an interesting play of the spiritual ego. Instead, we say, I accept that the terror and fear that I feel is what my energy field is processing and releasing for the collective. And then we start to experience space from that terror and fear so we can process it and release it through our fields versus identify with it and then look for ways to maneuver around or beyond it. That, that's a much better answer than I gave. <laughs> this is, I, hope, I think hope she's I would like watching. to say it's a complimentary answer. <laughs> complimentary. Yes, Don't discount always, what well, you gave. That was beautiful what you gave. <laughs> yes. I love hearing the other perspective. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's so amazing. You know, it's spirit is like Woodstock. And we're all these different bands. We're all singing the same themes, but we all have different melodies. We all have different words and lyrics and different journeys we take people on. But, you know, I'm of the opinion that every bit of truth, every expression is just a piece of this. And we, and because of how our brains are wired and we have subconscious programming and associations of certain words and phrases, we all need to hear it all different ways in order for it to click. And so I, I, I love being able to be on this show together and, and just share and connect mm -hmm. because truly together we are all helping all of us really wake up together as one. So. Absolutely. We certainly feel that there is new energy on the planet and yeah. that we are entering a new cycle. And I'm yeah. just curious as to how that has played into your work and whether you feel a sense of a new cycle beginning. Oh, absolutely. You know, it's to... I think what's interesting is when we think about the spiritual path and the wisdom that is being offered, you know, there are different dimensional perspectives. There is wisdom in the third dimension and the fourth and the fifth and so forth. And so I think what's really interesting is in this new paradigm, I think that what we're finding, or as the new cycle, as you would say, I think what we're finding is that we're redefining the teachings from a space of oneness so that any sense of division or separation with ourself isn't being attempted to be resolved by more spiritual division or separation. And I really think that for me, what really struck a chord is, you know, when I had my experience as an eight-year-old and I've had all these awakenings throughout my life that have been cataclysmic level, holy you-know-what awakenings where it literally feels like everything of my past exploded and oozed out my ears. And from this perspective, I realized that, you know, love is the highest vibration and the highest truth. And so it became my mission that if there was a teaching to offer to resolve anything, it had to come from the highest place of love. So if we're going to unravel these things called egos, how do we actually do that in a loving way without like throwing in a trash can or trying to abandon it? You know, as I often say, if it wouldn't be the way you speak to a child, it might not be the way you would treat yourself. Mm -hmm. So it became my mission to kind of redefine everything through the eyes of love, because if we are becoming more enlightened love beings, then love should be the path that gets us there. You know, I'm, if I can just say so, um, people tuning into you for the first time on YouTube, I can totally understand what's going on because of the awakening on this planet. They're yeah. seeing purity, they're seeing love, they're seeing uh, wisdom and a delivery that you give that is all of those. And that is unusual for today, my friend. Mm. Thank you. And so I see this very, very clearly in you and it just enhances everything we've, we've been taught is coming. So what's next in general? <laughs> <laughs> what's next? My God, what is next? Well, you know, there, there's, a, there's a, a three word phrase I was taught recently because I was talking to the universe about what's happening in the planet. Because, you know, it's so easy right now to look at the world and go, everything's going insane. Everything's going crazy. Um, and, and the three word phrase that I always work with the universe on is absorption foreshadows transcendence. And so on an individual and collective level, first we have to be absorbed 
in a certain condition to build up pressure like a slingshot or like a volcanic eruption to then create this transcendent force that takes us beyond the identification of something. So in order for us as a planet to really transcend systemic racism, we've had to go through a period of being fully absorbed in it in a more conscious way, which we experienced over the last year. In order for the divine feminine to come back and do equal prominence, we've had to be absorbed in all the ways the feminine is and has been repressed. In order for us to transcend fear, we've had to be absorbed in it. In order for us to transcend division, we've had to be absorbed in it, which has been the majority of what we've experienced during this last year and a half or so forth. So I think what's really interesting is what's next. Right now we've been experiencing a lot of absorption and it's making people tired, disillusioned, and it is truly a process that is important to transmutation, but it tends to break down the you know, energy and um, vitality of so many energetically sensitive beings. But what we're going to answer your question, where we're going next is we're moving through absorption and we're entering into transcendence. Mm -hmm. And I think what it's going to teach people is that it's not just doing your spiritual work and I do my work to then transcend, but that there's also this period of we have to actually be absorbed in something long enough to steep and build up the energy that then gives rise to the acceleration of transcendence. So it's really a balance of co-creation. I think that's beautiful. What I would love to do now is yes. to have you share one of your channeled processes where you help clear layers of yes. emotional density. It could be this lifetime or a lifetime before, but... I think it's a good segue that you just gave that answer to then move into experiencing that. Yeah, it's a great, thank you very much. I call this process the subtraction method. I was taught it many years ago. And it would start with any time we are feeling any kind of dysregulation in our nervous system, any kind of upsetness. And what we want to first do is we want to locate where the feeling is. It could be your mind, it could be your heart, it could be your, your stomach. It could be any chakra. It could be an, an organ or a limb. And then we would ask ourselves to, once we've located it, to label it, what is an adjective I could use to describe this sensation? And we have to know that everything that comes to us is always right. And so let's say we find it in our heart and we say, this feels like anxiety. And then what we do is we feel the anxiety and we just then feel underneath the anxiety, knowing that everything is always right. And maybe under the anxiety, we feel uncertainty or whatever word comes up. And we feel it for a moment. And then we go underneath that and we say, and what's underneath that? And perhaps that could be upsetness or sabotage or disillusionment. And we keep going through this process very slowly breathing and just taking our time the pivotal point, and most people think they're wrong when they get to this point, mm -hmm. is they'll get to a point where the answer is, I don't know. And it's actually the right answer because I don't know is the moment the ego gives up control of the process. And then we say, what's underneath? I don't know. And one to two or three layers under, I don't know, is actually light, love, joy and oneness. And each layer that we've gone through is a different layer of incarnation, a different emotional imprinting. And it allows us to clear the layers of emotional density, but in a way where we're befriending our feelings instead of having an oppositional relationship with it. Again, as always, to clear, to transmute, but always in the name of love. Mm -hmm. hmm. Beautiful. So where can people go to experience workshops with you, sessions with you, more information with you? Well, for a listing of upcoming events, to be a part of my free newsletter, I send out every Sunday. Um, my website is matcon.org. That's www.matcon.org. I also have free videos on YouTube, many of them. And it's just, you know, a true honor to serve at this time and to be a part of this incredible awakening where even though it looks like life can look like it's being flipped upside down, it is an even more fertile opportunity and invitation to be a part of the most extraordinary shift that we 
and all of our ancestors and other avatars have been prophesizing and preparing for. And so it's quite an honor to be here and to serve everyone. Amazing. You have a, a regular YouTube broadcast where you talk? I post videos. I'm going to probably get back to starting to post videos every other month. But I do a, I have a, a, a monthly, uh, two calls a month I do called Total Integration. And uh, once a month I do a thing called Project Resolution, which is a free global meditation mm -hmm. where every month it's a theme of, taking something in the world in headlines and using our light to add positive change to what we're seeing in the world. Mm, beautiful. What's going to be the name of your book that you're working on, that you're planning? My next book is called Holding Space. Mm. <laughs> and it is, this is my fourth book. And it is, I believe the subtitle is how to be with ourselves, connect with others, and face a world of uncertainty. And it is really about how do I embody love and express compassion when I'm interacting with people of different belief systems? Yes. How do I hold the space of love so yes. I'm not just, yes. like you said earlier, in meditation, one with spirit, yeah. but how do I connect with mm -hmm. spirit when spirit is dressed up as a person mm -hmm. vehemently anchored mm -hmm. in a different viewpoint. Right. And I've just taken the idea of every kind of sticky situation where people will say, hey, this teaching makes sense, but what about this circumstance? And I wanted to write a book, especially at this time in history. I wanted to address difficult. And I talk about so much. I share a lot of personal stories from my life that people have never heard. Um, I talk in a whole chapter about my experience of systemic racism and the realizations I had. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is the most, I mean, I love every book I've ever written, Child, This book for me is it. This book for me is it. I, <laughs> Can I say I it? think I have a prediction it's going to be a bestseller because Thank all you. the cells of my body are mm -hmm. tingling with the hunger for the information that the book yes. contains. How many times I, have, have we yeah. been asked, what do I do about my family? Yeah. Yes. You know, and I can't get away from it and, and, and you know, it drives me crazy and mm -hmm. you know, I'm trying to hold a love connection. This is a book we need and we need Thank it. Thank you. So yeah. when do you think it might happen? That well, I know it's coming out in the spring of next year. You know, it's being published through Sounds True. I'm, I'm actually doing my last week of edits this week and um, it's going to be published in the spring of next year. And, you know, with the stories I tell, because everything I've practiced on how to communicate, I've practiced with my family, um, at family functions, um, for better or for worse. Aww. And it, it, but I've I've really I've really learned some very specific things that I think that are very pivotal, pivotal and powerful. And the book itself, I don't know. To, it, at least I, I know as you know, when you're sitting there and you have a feeling like you are capturing lightning in a bottle, like when when I channel. And I feel that holy, you know what, coming through me. Mm -hmm. I'm channeling and then I kept pressing save like every three seconds because I'm so <laughs> afraid it's going to delete. <laughs> and then I send myself a copy because I'm just yes. so freaked. Like, send this is so amazing. <laughs> yeah, very, I mean, I'm just good. like, oh my God. But for, for me, the, this is, when, when I write, I write from the perspective of if this is the last thing I write, this is what I want to leave behind is my contribution to the world. I agree. And, and I feel like with this book, my other book's incredible, but for me, it felt like it really prepared me for what I've put into this book. Mm -hmm. And I am just like, wow. Yeah. I think this is going to be a unique book. It's a book for its time. There would be those who say, why do I have to wait for so long? And yet I believe that at the timing... Yeah. Is going to be perfect. Yeah, and absolutely. We're going to see it uh, unfold. This has been absolutely. Uh, absolutely delightful, Matt. And uh, as I say, and I and I told you in our private time, I know you're a busy guy. <laughs> and for us to spend this little time with you and all of those who are watching is such a privilege uh, for us and very timely. And so thank you, sir. Yeah. Thank you. It's it's an honor. I have admired your work for many years. I've wanted to meet you somehow. And so for me, this has actually been a very blessed experience. And I just look forward to more time of connecting. And uh, any way we can all come together for the benefit of our world would, would truly touch my heart. Beautiful. Thank you. So delicious. So heart opening. Mm. I know everyone who is tuning into this is also having an explosion of their cells <laughs> and an opening of their heart. Yeah. So please go and check out mattkhan.org if you haven't already. Mm -hmm. 
And we are going to take a 10 minute break and then be back for the circle of 12. Welcome back, everyone. Monica and I were just uh, really talking among ourselves and enjoying this time we had with Matt. A oh, man for so, our time. So delightful. Just exuding love. I understand by watching him why he has so many followers. Mm. People have really seen the purity there. It's, uh, it's a wonderful thing to see. Really, absolutely. Just so beautiful. So please go and visit his website and check out those YouTube videos. I'm sure you're going to enjoy them. Hmm. Earlier, we talked about the questions and how there's so many people in trouble. And Lee mentioned that for this month, at least, we wanted to focus on sending love and compassion to those who are in trouble. So in this next section, before we go to the circle of 12, I invite you to join me in that exact intention for us as old souls as light workers joining together to send love and compassion to everyone on the planet especially those who in these moments are faced with maybe fears anxieties worries concerns and all of those that are going through this, what we want to do is generate an energetic hug of love that we are going to send collectively to every person on this beautiful planet going through extraordinary times of shift and change. And you may even wish to place your hands on your heart where we are generating this connection, this emotion, this feeling, this transformance of energy, of love. So just spend a few more moments feeling, sensing, imagining, that great big hug of love we are sending to everyone. You may even feel or sense a hug being sent to you, embracing you. For as we do to ourselves, we do to others. And you may feel that wave of love coming back to you. And if you're feeling that wave of love, let us send that out again, but amplified. So we are now sending an amplification of that original hug of love. And just spend a few more moments now to quietly integrate that wave of love and you may gently relax your hands and just be aware that that wave of love will continue even beyond this time together and even after the circle of 12, this wave of love continues. And so we'll just now quietly sit and receive the message from Cryon for tonight's circle of 12. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon. Come a little closer. The circle of 12, the very name, should elicit in you a feeling, perhaps even a reality. Those who have experienced this over and over know of what I speak.
The answer to one of the questions, my partner said the circle of 12 represents a way of life. It is not a meditation. The circle of 12 is more than a soul experience. It's an example. How close can you be to the creator of all things, which you call God or spirit? Do you have permission to be so close that you have the same love essence as the creator or all the prophets or the highest masters? There would be those on this planet who would say no. There are those on this planet who would profess to have the absolute truth and the love of God and then to tell you that you are not worthy. Dear ones, you are worthy. If there is one message I would have, that the love of God is everything, that love is everything. The word itself cannot even begin to describe what it is. It's peace, it's healing, it's longer life for you on this planet. It is the essence, the thickness of all that is in the light of the entire universe. It is more than you can ever describe with that one word. And to think that there are those who would keep you from it, thinking you're not good enough for it. They don't have the full story. Perhaps they haven't felt it yet. But the invitation is for you to always feel it. Do you think that the creator would have put you here? And then judged you on what you did so that you couldn't get close. Would you do that to your children? Would you judge something that they did when they were very, very young and say, well, I'm sorry, you can never see my face again. That is exactly what some are telling you right now. It is so much grander than any belief system on this planet that limits gods to the rules, limits God to the rules that they have, they have established. There's only one, one essence, and it is love. And in that, there are answers to almost every issue from anyone watching this right now. Answers and solutions to, us, to almost any question that's being asked. It's so fascinating to see how human beings get their most creative, beautiful, correct, accurate solutions. And it's normally when they're not concentrating on them. It's renowned. You ask inventors and artists and composers and they'll say, I do my best work when I'm not thinking about my work. When I disengage or perhaps I have an aha experience in the twilight before I go to sleep or even during a dream. But when I start to use my intellect and then concentrate, what shall I do? How shall I do it? Is it enough? Is it not enough? Is it right? Is it wrong? Then nothing happens. Have you thought about that? Love is so beautiful, pervasive, if you want it to be, in all of your life that truly there is a time when you can sit and not even concentrate on your issues. And by not concentrating on them, you'll get the answers and some will flow in automatically. There are some guests who appeared on this very show who will tell you that they were not thinking about something, they had a spontaneous remission. It's almost they had to clear the way and let the creator in and let love do its work. What a profound idea. The circle of 12 is a model. It's a model for getting out of the way. There is nothing wrong with the intellectual human being, dear ones, as long as that intellectual does not then rule the spiritual. For an intellectual is a high thinker. There's a place of balance for everything. But when it comes to some 
multidimensional ideas of the universe, the galaxy, your soul, and your life, the intellect cannot begin to make sense of it. So you cannot use, for instance, a very limited computing device to compute love. <laughs> it's not computable. And yet there are those constantly, even those listening now, would say, well, I would like to figure out what he's talking about. So if you're one of those who wants to figure out what I'm talking about, I will say to you, you will never figure out what I'm talking about. It's not figure outable. Until you stop and assess that which is around you in a beautiful way and stop figuring it out, that is when you may have your aha experience. Our guest today, Matt, he had one. One of the things he will tell you is after the white angel appeared to him, even at eight years old, he figured it out for years. Into that, which is adulthood, figuring it out for years, figuring, figuring. It's when he stopped figuring that it poured into his life, poured in. You might say that this man was destined to have his cup filled up with what it is today, a full understanding and a transmission of love. We're going to do something different in the circle of 12. This is not so unusually different than we've done before, but it's for the time. This particular program is the first program of another series of 52 programs. And so in that, we celebrate it by doing something for everyone else. Those who have come here today for healing have a bigger opportunity for a healing than they've ever had in any program. If you follow my lead, you'll see why. There have been guest after guest, a healer after healer, reader after reader, in this last year, tell you one thing that is so, such a, a commonality in different words, but that the one thing that they keep telling you, if you are in a position to help somebody else, that you receive that help as well. Did you hear that? There's something about dropping the guards of your own issues and pouring love to someone else that then reflects the creator back at you and you end up with the same kind of healing. It is such a multidimensional idea. It's not a linear idea. Some would say, well, yes, but I didn't send that person healing what I needed. Don't think an intellectual thought like that. Love isn't that way. You send love to someone, they get healed for what they need. It backs up and heals you for what you need. Do you think that God doesn't know what you need? Or that you have to specify it or put it on a piece of paper or mail it? There are some who still do. There's a bridge we're going to cross right now. We're going to move into an auditorium, as we have so often. The bridge is what, what you think you know to what you don't know. That bridge we have gone through so many times before. Without talking more about it, let's just cross that bridge. All of those of you who never have before, it's simply a way, a metaphor that says you're moving into an area that's very special. It's, a, it's filled with things, perhaps, that you have never visualized before. All of those who have done this with me before, please take my hand right now. For those who have not, please come and take the hands of those who have. Visualize this with me. Visualize with me. Don't have to, to be a master pretender to know what taking someone's hand is. Let's go across the bridge together right now. We move into an area that is sacred. It is a temple. It is your temple. There is nothing more precious in your life than this place, dear ones. 
you are seeing this singularly and yet there are thousands at this moment seeing it together with you that is multi-dimensionality one with many many with one you can't tell the difference and in all that there is a collective purpose and love of thousands of people watching this right now that we're going to use I want you to go into this this theater of the round that we have talked about so many times you go through a door or a portal which is a metaphor for your area this is your area it's precious it's a place you might say an energy that is your soul and you're gonna move into it with me right now at the same time you move into your area thousands are moving into their area however it's not separate as you walk onto that stage everyone does but you see it singularly we have said this before perhaps you're having a hard time with that with that visualization with that whole idea and yet even as a child you are told that God is able to listen to billions of prayers simultaneously and deal with each individual personally how do you explain that well, we're about to do it and the permission to do that is the God in you the sacredness of your soul God given a soul which is eternal in almost every belief system on the planet eternal belongs to you and today you use the eternalness of it I want you to walk down the stairs and up onto that stage in a theater in the round with a with a with an audience that today is immense you might say it's a stadium today and yet it has the intimacy of a small group because there's a hush no one is saying anything the audience is in place and ready the audience is in place and is ready because that audience today is crying out for your help the collective you the sacred you even if you are in trouble you've come to be healed to this place today you're going to sit in a chair and become the master healer how does that feel and you might say I am not equipped I cannot do this I cannot envision this I would say don't figure it out if you have to visualize anything visualize the sacredness and purity of the creator in you is going to then help those in the audience all of them the thousands who watch this program right now to you I am saying this each one of you I invite on stage not together but individual your own soul stage each one of you has a piece of the Creator inside each one of you looking at this right now is a master healer if you could wipe away all that which is humanness in you you're sitting in your soul energy you have permission to wipe away temporarily all that duality and humanness and grief and anger and sit with the purity of God and do something and that something is coming right now all those in the audience is anyone on this planet right now who is in trouble whether they're sick whether they're afraid of the virus that is here or the situation that is here or any of the things that people are going through right now that lose sleep and create anxiety and fear or anger there are millions of them if not billions and they all all of them wish they could take some magic pill where they could have peace and sleep and try to understand what's happening in their lives or in their bodies or with their governments or their countries wishing it could go back to the way it was and not knowing what's going to happen next and financially in trouble the thousands of you right now I wish to sit in the chair 
and with the purity of love, the purity of love that you have as a creative source, the master that you are, I want you to send all of them collectively and individually the biggest love wash that they've ever felt. And there will be some that say, well, that's not going to be enough crying. And I'm telling you, oh, it is. And that's what you came to learn. Love conquers all. And in this love wash, there are individual solutions for every single one of them to sleep at night, to heal better, to heal at all, perhaps, or to understand their magnificence, to relax, perhaps, for the first time in months or even years. To know that there are solutions to absolutely everything they're afraid of or going through right now. Those of you who are here, if you do this collectively with me right now, can touch millions. That's the circle of 12. It is a reality that has been studied. It's called the field. It is talked about so many places where consciousness is king of all energies and today the consciousness is love for each one can you do that can you sit there and feel the feedback of those who will start crying perhaps because it's working or the healings that might be occurring in that audience because it's working or those who are feeling peace for the first time in months because it's working because you have taken out a little time to sit on that stage now the best part. Are you ready? The best part. <laughs> the more who are healed in this audience, the more you will heal today. Whatever you came for, by pushing this to others, it will come right back at you. This is a love fest. It's a healing fest. It's a peace fest. It belongs to you, and I want you to stay there and feel it and feel it and feel it and know that perhaps this meeting alone and others that will come from it like this will make a difference right now to so many on the planet who need everything you can give them stay stay i am crying in love with humanity stay and so it is.